I used to feel ashamed to share my story. Labelled, judged, stigmatised, all through my life. Labelled in negative ways, labelled a no-hoper, waste of space, a criminal. Labels I've managed to detag myself from. And today I'm going to label myself as a storyteller. My name is Sam Smith. I was born in Bolton in the 1970s. Came from a broken home, let down by the education system and the welfare system as a youth. Labelled all my life, struggled. That was until the birth of my son in 1994. I think the earpiece has come off, sir. I was 23 years old, my son was born in 1994. I was barely a man, I was 22. But I was determined I would give my son things I never had in my life. Love, care, attention. And I knew the responsibilities of being a good father. I wanted to provide my son with things I never had in my life. Being labelled is not nice. Being judged is not nice. I didn't want my son growing up in hopelessness. I had a vision. I had a vision for my son. Holding my precious baby son in my hands, I wanted to provide him with love and care and attention, things I never had in my life. And I decided I would move to the seaside of Blackpool. And one day, I decided I would go out into the local community with a bucket and a sponge. And with ambition and determination and self-respect for myself, I was determined with ambition and determination that I would provide love, care and attention for my family. Coming from a single parent background, a young mum, I was one of four children All different dads. Never knew my birth father. My mum married a man who became my stepdad. He became very volatile to me and to my siblings. Violence, attacking my mum. And finally he rejected me. Our personalities clashed. Continuing those labels. Then had me put into care at a tender young age of 13. My brother was eight. And he was also placed in care. So I found life challenging to say the least. School in particular made me feel worthless. Inadequate. Couldn't engage in the education system. I knew that there was something inside me, but nobody recognised that something to grow, to give me that guidance and that support. So I rebelled against the system. I rebelled. I created my own rules. And coming from that poverty-stricken background, I stole to eat. I was hungry, so I stole. When I needed something, I went for it and got it. And eventually, this led me, at the age of 15, being sent to prison, to youth custody. And within seven days of my release, I was back in the same place. The circle, the cycle I couldn't break out of, back into the same place. Leading me into some of the darkest places of my life being in the midst of the 1990 Strange Ways prison riot. The sights, the smells, I carried with me every day. And there was worse yet to come. Finding my brother lying dead through a harrowing overdose. Seeing the lifelessness in his eyes, the de de decomposing body. Sights and smells that will never leave with me, will live with me always.
as I never felt supported by carers or the education system. I spent my time sleeping rough, sleeping in shop eaters, keeping warm, one eye closed, one eye open on the rest of the world going on around me. I was living in chaos. The gang became my family. But when my son was born, I was determined that I would provide the love, the care, the attention. And I went into the local communities and built a very successful business, washing cars. I then cross-sold other services, such as window cleaning, carpet cleaning. And I was directed to the Prince's Trust. And I undertook business management courses with the Prince's Trust. I wanted to change my life. I had responsibilities. And I was given the funding to buy my first van and better equipment so I could serve my customers better. I give every young person who knocks upon my door opportunities. I seen the potential in them where others didn't. I had the empathy. I could relate to them. They'd been written off themselves, failed at school. I give them a Saturday job. I trained them, I coached them, I guided them. 320 young people I've given single-handed support to in Blackpool. But the number doesn't matter. Making a difference to one person is a life miracle of my existence. My passion to support the next generation is unwavering. Absolutely unwavering. I live my day of this, it's my last day. And if I've not made a difference to somebody's life, my life is not worth living. The outcome, I won business of the year in the North and West Lancashire. What an achievement. What an achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much. My family, I care what I have one son, three boys and a little girl. I'm proud of my family and what I've achieved for them. My eldest lad is now an accountant. He's 22. I'm proud of what I've achieved, but I still see the poverty around our towns and cities. Just as Lorraine has mentioned, it's sad. We need to make changes. We need to come together to collaborate, to make a difference to our communities. I have the vision. I have a vision. And I want you to think about how you can relabel young people in your communities and stop the stigmatization, the judgmental behavior. Every young person has got the potential in them. It's unlocking that potential so we can create the future leaders of tomorrow. My project support the youth. I sold my business and I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to supporting young people. So I set up a project in Blackpool. And I have been able to sign a waste food partnership with one of the top four supermarkets and to deliver food, good food, three tons of food since January we've given to our communities. I myself have drove into the poverty-stricken council estates to give food to young families. Every day, every day of my life is lived by helping others. I go into schools, year ones, twos, threes, fours, right up until the age of 25. I help anybody. 
But more in particular, the young people, they need to have voices. They need to be given a voice. I've seen the teachers myself labelling young people, groups of children written off at five and six years old, written off because of the siblings, the parents. Sad state of affairs. But when I go into those classrooms and share the success story of Mr. William Morrison, how he started his business selling eggs in his local community, anybody with an idea can start a business. Anybody can. It's about giving the coaching, the guidance, the tools that they need to not only survive, but to thrive. We need to build the next generation of entrepreneurs. So our programs we deliver into schools are about developing entrepreneurship, communication skills. And my project, I Can Trust, which is a community, a directory, we want to build across our towns and cities to engage with businesses, to engage with the communities, our young people are at the forefront of developing the I Can Trust project. And I want you to consider how you will label young people today. I want you to consider that. And how we can all collaborate together and get involved in supporting the next generation. Thank you very much for listening to me. I really appreciate Jude inviting me along to be in your story. I see a movement happening we need to have voices. We need to challenge our MPs, our councillors. We need to challenge them. But finally, I want you to ask a question to you. What new label could you give a young person today? Thank you for listening. And enjoy the rest of the event. <laughs>